Hi and welcome to the Issue Tracker project and this is the second quality assurance project that we're going to be completing and to get started with this just click the uh, repository link right here and you just want to click code and then just grab this clone URL and then in glitch click new project import from github and just paste in that URL and press ok and that will start um, downloading the project for us and this project right here is basically um, consists of a few forms and what you can do is you can create so if we go to a URL like the name of a project so in this case if the project was going to be API test we'd put API test like this and then press enter what we can do is um, we can submit an issue here so I can just say issue like that and um, we can give some text inside it and then you can put um, a name in here as well and then you have some optional fields that are assigned to and status text and then when you click submit what it does is it creates a document. Um, I think mine will be right down here at the bottom. Yeah, right here. And what it does is it creates a document for that in the database. And it also adds created on and last updated field. And it has a status of open. What you can do is you can click close and then that will change the status to closed. And so it's kind of like GitHub issues, basically. You can open and close issues. And when it's closed, it'll go like will change background like this and you can also go ahead and delete it so basically um depending on the so if you want to change projects you just change the project name like this and that will be the the um issues to this project will be shown right here and also what's not been implemented in the front end for some reason okay brilliant okay um yeah clearly some of the stuff isn't working in here but um, what's also not been implemented properly in the front end is the fact that you can also edit your issues as well. There's like a form that um, for the API test projects, you can also edit your issues. So yeah, now that we have our um, project imported right here, what you can do is just copy this live app link and then you can submit that if you want to um, submit your project. And as you can see, there's zero testing whatsoever. So um, you can just submit it right there, but we're gonna do it properly, obviously. Um, so, like I said, there's there's the um, index page, which allows you to create an issue for the API test project, update an issue for that project, or delete it where you give the ID. But then again, this can be done from the issues page that I showed you before. And then you also have um, the issues page. And the issues page basically allows you to sub. It, it'll take a URL in from the parameter of, of a project. And then what you can do is you can submit a new issue or and you can have all the issues for that project displayed. And this has been hooked up already to our some express routes, which we'll fill in. Um, in public, it's just a style sheet, so don't worry about that. And then in routes, don't touch this. Um, in api.js, this is where we have all our routes set up. And the only route is api slash issues slash and then the name of the project. And we're gonna um, create a get route, a post route, a put route and a delete route for this. Um, so that's gonna be to get all the um, issues. That's gonna be to create a new issue, update an existing issue, and then to delete um, an issue. And then in tests, there's no unit tests for this, but we do have some functional tests. I think we have 11 of them to fill in. And that basically tests those API routes right there. Um, one final thing that it asks you to do is set this node, um, set an environment variable um, in here called node underscore env to test and I'm not gonna do that right now but what this does is it enables the testing Um, it was actually driving me crazy earlier because it kept repeating and looping and it was so confusing Um, so I'm not gonna do that now but we'll do that later so yeah that's the project set up right there so the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna set up a database connection to store all our documents for the various issues and you do need a MongoDB Atlas account for this and what I'm also going to do is um, install uh, update MongoDB to the latest version because I like to keep it um, with, to, to make sure everything works with new documentation. So what I'm just going to do in the terminal is say npm install MongoDB and I'm just going to put add latest here and that will um, fetch the latest version of MongoDB and install it for us. Um, the other thing you have to do is in your environment variables, just create a variable called PW or something like that and just put your database password in there because we're gonna need that when we're creating the URI. In server.js, what happens here is that um, they create an express app right here, body parser gets mounted, so we don't have to worry about doing that later. 
And then it gives this app to this um, API roots method, and that's in the roots and then API. And that's this uh, function right here. And this function basically adds all these roots for the slash issue slash project thing that we forgot. And then all of these um, roots right here get the project from the parameters. So we already have the project name there as well. Um, I'm just gonna check on this. Um, what I'm also going to be doing for this is I'm going to be using Mongoose. Um, this might not be the proper way to do this or it might not be the official thing or whatever. I haven't looked at the main code, so I don't know. But um, I'm personally gonna use Mongoose because I just find it a lot easier than doing all of the MongoDB stuff. So what I'm also just gonna do is say npm install Mongoose. And let's just go with the latest version of that as well. So I'm gonna install that as well. Um, by the way, in MongoDB, what you need to do is go to your cluster and then click collections. And what we're going to be doing is just creating a new database for this. So just click create database here. And I'm just gonna name this issue tracker. And um, the collection name doesn't really matter, but I'm just gonna create a collection called issues. But Mongoose will take care of the collection creation for us. So we don't have to worry about that either. So we should have that ready as well. Cool. Once Mongoose has been installed and MongoDB has been installed, you just want to run the refresh command. And that will basically um, refresh this app. And if we look at package.json now, we should have the latest MongoDB and Mongoose installed. Um, I'm going to be doing all the code. I'm not going to touch the server.js. I'm just going to be doing all the code in here. So once we receive our express app in this function, we'll connect to the database and before we do all of this. So what I'm going to do here is require um, MongoDB and Mongoose. So I'm going to remove these existing lines for now. And I'm just going to say let um, MongoDB equals require and then MongoDB like this. And I'm also going to do let Mongoose equals require mongoose like this and instead of this connection string right here i'm just going to remove that and i'm just going to create a string called uri so i'll just say let uri equals and what i'm going to do is just grab the connection uri so if you go into clusters and then click connect here and then connect your application and then choose node 3 3.6 or later and just copy this. You just wanna paste this into this URI string. And what I'm just gonna do is re um, replace the password from the environment variables. And remember that I stored it as um, PW. So this, is, this will be process.env.pw like this. And that will just concatenate it into the connection string. And what I'm also gonna do is fill in the database name. And if you remember um, the database name that we just set up was called uh, issued underscore tracker right here. So that's the database we're going to connect to. Um, and then what we want to do is call the uh, classic Mongo mongoose connection method. So um, again, this is from the free code camp install and set a mongoose challenge. So that's where you can get this from. So what I'm going to do is in this um, app, in this function right here that takes in an app, and remember that this is this um, API roots function that that's being run right here. What we want to do is just connect um, using Mongoose to that URI right here. And remember the um, options object as well that you have to give. And um, I believe that's everything we need yeah, for the database connection. So now we should be connected to our database and ready to go with Mongoose and MongoDB. So let's look at test one now. And what it says is that we should prevent cross-site scripting attacks. And remember cross-site scripting is basically inserting code into inputs and then that will be executed on the machine or on a server. So we wanna prevent that. And the way we can prevent that is by sanitizing the inputs so that if there's something that looks like code, it'll be encoded in a way where it won't be executed. And the way we can do that um, is by setting this X XSS and protection header to one, which basically in, in allows the browser to sanitize the input. And the way we can do that is by using Helmet's um, XXS, XSS filter. And by the way, this doesn't actually work. This is just, this is a really rubbish form of protection. And um, in the later versions of Helmet, this was actually revoked and it actually disables this. But what we're going to do is, as far as we're concerned, in the version of Helmet that's being used here, this one right here, and um, this does enable the header. So what we would just want to do is we want to mount this for all routes. And it says in README that um, security features should be added to server.js. So in server.js, what we first want to do is require Helmet. So just say something like let Helmet equals, oops, 
equals require and then helmet like this. And what we just want to do is run the XXS filter method for all routes. So after body parser, what we can just do is app.used, which will mount for all routes. And we just want to mount the middleware helmet.xss filter like this. And um, I think that's the name of the method anyway. Yes, that's it. So that should um, mount, that should basically for all routes, it should pass the request in a way where um, the any inputs are sanitized and that should prevent apparently prevent cross-site scripting although it really doesn't so yeah that's test one completed now so because we're using mongoose um in order to start um saving um, documents for issues in our database we're gonna need to create a schema to dictate what each issue model can have and the way we and we should do this straight after our database connection so the place to do this would be in api.js just after our database connection right here. And I'm going to just copy and paste the one I made before because it's going to take ages to for me to type it out. Um, obviously, I'll explain it, but um, I just want to try and make the videos not too long because they're getting really long lately. So um, what I've done here is I've just created a schema called issue schema and I've called a new mongoose schema method. And then I set all the fields that we need to have. And if you want some indication of where to get these fields from, if you look in the forms in index.html or issue.html, we can see that the forms have all of these inputs right here. And it's a good idea to use the same um, field names as these inputs right here, because that way um, when we're updating something, for example, we can just use the request body directly rather than having to change the names for our fields. So we have an issue title. Um, which will be the title of the issue. And I've just gone with the required string for that. Um, if you look at the form, by the way, this, the inputs with the stars right here are the required inputs. So we have issue title right here, issue text, and the created by. So those three are just strings, and I've just said required to be true. Then we have the assigned to and status text. And these strings um, are not required, as we can see, but they are strings, so I've just put strings here. We also have this open, which is a Boolean. And um, by default, when you submit an issue, it's um, it's open by default. So the Boolean should be true by default. And then when you close an issue, um, open will become false. So the open Boolean is there basically to track whether an issue is open or closed. We also have created on and updated on. And what I've just done is use the date type for this. And when we're using the date type, we can just give a UTC date string and it will create a date for us. And I've just said the required to be true. And these will be set from the form, but they will be set automatically by calling the new date constructor. And finally, what I've done is I've created a field called project. And this is just going to be a string. And this just stores the name of our project because right now, um, they all have the issues all have project name associated with them and there's no really way to store this and um, when we submit um, projects so what i'm just going to do is store the project name there as a string so we've got a schema now saying what information will be stored with each issue the next thing to do is create a model from this so what i'm just going to say here is say let issue equals and uh, the way we create a schema is it was called the mongoose.model method and sorry, the way we create a model is when we call the mongoose or model method. And what we can do is we can give, firstly give the name of the model. And in this case, the name is just going to be issue. Remember, this is the name of the model, which will be used to create the collection name as well. This is just the JavaScript variable to refer to the constructor for it. And the second argument we give it is a schema. And in this case, we wanted to use the issue schema that we just created right here. So that should be um, everything for that. So basically we've created a schema dictating what information each issue is gonna store. And then we've created a model using that schema. And then now we can call new issue and give an object with all of these fields to create new issue documents and then save them to our database. So now we're going to tackle the second test. And what it says is that I can post to API slash issues slash under the name of a project with form data containing issue title, issue text created by. And um, what it does is we just have to make sure that we create a new um, entry in our database. And the form that we're going to use for this is if you go to um, slash and then 
uh, any name of our project. So the, in this one, for example, I've got API test, or you can be test or anything we want right here. It'll, it'll just change the name of the project right here. What you have here is, is this form, and this form is an issue.html right here. And what this form basically does is, it basically firstly grabs the project name um, from the URL right here. Then what it does is it sets the U the URL for the root to slash API slash issues and then the name of the project, which is the root that we have defined right here in our API. And then what it does is it grabs the inputs from the form and then sticks them in the request body. And then this will be sent along um, for this form. It'll be sent on a post to this root right here. And then what we need to do is implement this post right here to basically create um, the issue in our database. The first thing we want to do is because this title text and created by are required, we just want to make sure that we do some client side um, um, validation to make sure these are filled in before they're submitted. So in index.html, what we can do here is um, the required attribute right here for the fields that are actually required, which is the text, the title and the created by, we just want to make sure that we set these two true right here. And by the way, if you make a, even the tiniest edit to this page, um, Glitch will start getting angry that we haven't used double quotes. So if you want to fix that, just click format this file right here. And then if we were to refresh this and I try to submit without um, filling this in, it'll say like, please fill in this field each time. So this is some basic client side validation that we've created right there. Um, so the next thing we want to do is basically implement our post route. So if we go down here to api.js, um, remember that they will post to slash api slash issues and then whatever project uh, was have created right here. So this will post to API test, for example. And um, what they've done is just, they've just grabbed the name of the project here from the request params. So we have the name of the project as well to work with. And again, I'm going to be copying and pasting code because honestly, I just want to save some time here. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is um, create um, a new issue instance with the issue constructor. Remember when we set up our model right here with and we, we basically set up a constructor to create a new issue document. So what I've done is I've just created a new issue document called and I've assigned it to the variable name new issue. And what I've done here is I've set the issue title of the document to um, grab the title from the request body, the text to grab it from the request body and the created by to grab it from the request body. I've set the assigned to to be um, the assigned to from the request body or if that doesn't exist. So if that's not been filled in right here, it will just set that to an empty string. And the same is done for the status text. So if it's in the request body, it'll be taken from there. Otherwise, it'll be set to an empty string. I've set the open um, Boolean to true because by default, any issue that you report on a project or something or an app, it's open by default because it hasn't been solved. So we just want to set this open right here to true. For the created on and updated on, since these are of type date, what we have to do is give a UTC string um, and then Mongoose will create a date object from that and store it. So the way I've done this is I've just set these to the current date right here. So I've just called a new date constructor and I've called it to UTC string method. And this will basically create a new instance, new date with the current date and time convert this into a UTC string and then give it to Mongoose and then Mongoose will basically um, create a new date object with it. It's kind of counterproductive, but you have to give a UTC string here. The final thing I've done is I've set the project field. And remember the project field was, is already obtained for us from the um, root parameters because it's posting to slash API slash issues slash project. So I've just said assign this to this project right here. So now that we've got the new issue, what we want to do is save this to the database. And the way we can do that is we can say new issue dot save and this attempts to save it to the database and uh, what we have is we have a callback function to give in here and it takes in an error and the data this time is the saved issue document that gets returned if it was successful and what we want to do in here is we want to say um, if the error doesn't exist so if exclamation mark error and the saved issue document was returned successfully um, what they want us to do is um, um, return an object, but we'll do that in the next one. But for now, I'm just going to um, 
console.log the saved issue just to make sure that we've saved it to our database. Again, we'll be returning a response in the next um, challenge. So um, saved issue right there. So let's open up the logs now. And if we clear this, and what I'm gonna do is try submitting a new issue here. So I'll put, um, let's say something like issue, blah, 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 put some text in here. And then if I put my name in here and then click on submit issue, it shouldn't do anything here, but we can see that um, a saved issue has been returned right here. And if we go into our database and then we refresh this, again, this hasn't done anything because we don't have a response setup, but if we refresh this, we can see that the issue has been created. The issue title has been set, issue text has been set, name has been set here as well. Um, open has been set to true, and then the created on and updated on um, the dates have been set by Mongoose since we gave, an a, uh, gave a string, and the project has been set to API test right there. If I change this URL to some other project name and then submitted it, the project name would be set here accordingly as well. So that's test one completed since we can now create a new issue documents. So now we're going to tackle a third test, and what it says is that once we post to it, um, the object will be returned which includes all of those fields and it will include an empty string when um, there wasn't an input in, in an optional field. It will also include the created on and updated on fields as well and the open field as well and the ID and the easiest way that we can return all of these fields which is they're pretty much asking for all the fields in our document is just to return the saved issue document right there by itself. So what we want to do is in the post route, um, if if it was saved okay, we just want to say return um, rest.json. And the reason I'm using return here, which we don't need to use, is that the testing will start acting weird if we don't explicitly return right here. And what we just want to do is just um, JSON the saved issue back to the user. So if I save that now, I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this. And then I submit a new issue. So I'll just say issue and then like that. And then I'll put my some text here. And then I'll put a name like Tim. And then if I submit this, um, this the, the, the uh, issue isn't directly returned here because this page doesn't actually render it properly unless we redirected it. But what it should do is it should return an issue. A way we can check this is if we go back into the uh, normal homepage, um, I don't know why that won't redirect. There we go. We also have a form right here to submit an issue for API test. And this one will show the JSON response in here. So I'm just gonna create another issue in here. Um, and what I'm gonna do is submit that and see the response that we get. And we can see that the response has been logged right here. And we have the ID, issue title, issue text returned. And the status text field, which we didn't set right here, has indeed been set to an empty string and that's okay. And if we go ahead and refresh this, um, we should see that those entries should now have been created right here. So that's that done. But we're not done here yet. What we need also need to do is, unfortunately, we have to do the testing as well. So in fcctesting.js, if we go to, um, sorry, not that one, um, in tests and then functional test.js, that one, sorry. Um, we have these three tests to fill in. So the first test will basically try and post with every single field filled in. The second test will try and post with just the required fields filled in. And the third one will um, check for missing required fields. So let's let's see what we want to do here. So in the first one, um, again, I'm gonna copy and paste the, text, the tests because they take absolutely ages. So I'm just gonna copy this. So again, um, try HTTP is being used in all of these tests. Um, so look at the try HTTP videos if you're not sure about how this works. So I'm gonna paste this in here. And what this does is it it starts up the server, which and the server is the app that's been imported right here from server.js and it sends a post request to slash API slash issue slash test. This time we're not ascending to the API test project that we're doing here. It actually sends to the test project right here. And it sets an issue title, issue text, created by assigned to status text, and this open to true. And since we set the open to true ourselves, we wanna just remove this um, because we set that ourselves in our database method. And then what it does is, um, on the end method, it basically receives the response, which should be the JSON response that we send back. 
and it checks that the status is 200, which means a successful post request. It checks that the issue title field is the title, issue text field is the text. So it basically tests that all the um, fields in the JSON response, which is a saved document, are equal to what we submitted right here. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to create a variable in here called ID1 and ID2. So I'll just set ID1 for now. And I'm going to set this to an empty string. And then here, what I just do is I set the ID to whatever the ID was returned for the document that they created, because then we can then use this document for further um, testing later. And you'll see where it gets used. So what this just basically just does is it just grabs the ID from the response of the document that was just created and sets this to ID one. And I've just logged that as well. I've said ID one has been set to ID one. And at the end of every test, we want to make sure that we call the done method to make sure that there's no failing um, in the assertions. Now I'm also going to do a test for the required fields filled in. Um, again, I'll copy and paste and then I'll explain what happens here. So we're on the required fields filled in now. And this is almost identical to the um, all fields filled in, except it just um, fills in the required fields like the name suggests. So I'm going to move this along here. And what this does is it basically does the same checks, except that for the assigned to and the status text fields, we just said that they return an empty string, which is what they should be doing. And what I'm also going to do is for the document that gets created in this one, um, I'm also going to make sure that um, I'm going to, I might change the title too, just to make sure that we can distinguish between them. But I'm also going to save the ID of this for later. So I'm just going to say that ID2 equals, set this to an empty string. And I'm going to grab this piece of code here and I'm going to save the ID as well. Again, you'll see later why we are storing these IDs, but I'm just going to say ID2 has been set to and then ID2. And then once again, make sure you call the done function right here. Um, finally, uh, we have this thing where we have missing required fields. And what we actually need to do is do some validation in our database and meth post method to make sure that the required fields are filled in. Because even though there's some client side validation here, and this is just to the form right here. And if we directly make a post request with the request body, the form validation won't work. So we need to make sure that we do some validation in our um, API route right here. And the validation that I'm just going to do is a very simple if statement. So if I just copy this and um, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we do this validation right before um, we start creating a new issue. So what I've done here is I've said that if either the issue title field doesn't exist or the issue text field or the issue created by fields doesn't exist. We just want to JSON back. Um, I'm just going to keep this as text to make it simple. We just want to JSON back some text saying required fields are missing from the request. And we want to make sure we run return here because if we don't run return, this will be JSON back, but this will be attempted regardless. So we want to make sure that we return this. And I'm just going to quickly check this. So Again, this won't show the JSON response, but if we go back to the main page and then I try to submit an issue without the text and the created by fields filled in. Um, yeah, this this also has client side validation, which is why um, this isn't working. But what if this didn't have validation, it will actually say here that the required fields are missing, which is this right here. And we wanna make sure that we set up the functional test for that as well. So um, in here, I'm just going to copy this and paste it in and then I'll explain what's happened. So what happens here is that um, we try to post to slash issue slash text, but inside the request body, we've only set the issue title. We haven't set the issue text and the created by field. And what we're going to do is just check that the, uh, the response body has this error message text that we set from our API route. So that's the test for the... Um, the missing required fields. So what we've essentially just done now is basically we've JSONed back the saved issue document and we have basically created some functional tests where we first fill in all the fields and see if the documents been created properly. We then fill in just the required fields and check that the documents been created properly with the um, other fields being set to an empty string. And finally we've um, implemented some basic um, validation to make sure that these fields are in the request body. Otherwise, we'll return an error message here. And what this does is it basically 
tries to run that with missing required fields and it checks that the um, error message has been returned right here. And that's basically um, test three completed right there. So now we're going to be looking at completing the third challenge. And what it says is that um, we can create a put request to um, a certain project and you can give an ID of an issue and then you can update the fields of that issue. And this isn't available in each of the individual issue pages. But um, if you look at, so for example, if you were on this one, there's no way to update it. But if you go to the main page, we have this form where we can give an ID, title, text, whatever fields we want. And we can also even check check to close it and then submit it. And what that will do is it'll update the document inside here. So let's say that we want to update the document with this ID. What we would do is give this ID like this and then you, you would click submit right here. And the way we're going to be doing this since we have an ID is we're going to be using Mongoose find by ID and update method. And the, we can get all the fields. Remember the find by ID and update method, you need to give an object with all the fields that you want to set. And we can give this from the request body. So if we just do console.log rec.body, and then we have a look at this, um, and I just go ahead and I submit this, and I'm going to refresh this and try it again just to make sure that we have it cleared. Yeah, we can see that there's a problem here. And the problem is the fact that um, because these inputs right here were empty, the request body has this empty string for each of these fields. And if we were to use this for our update object, what it would do is it would basically empty out all of these fields in here. So what we wanna do is make sure that we look through this and we delete any fields from this any keys from this which have an empty string like this which haven't been filled in because we don't want to empty them out if they haven't been filled in and the way we can do this is I'm going to create a new object for this update so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, down here um, let and I'm going to call this update object like this I'm going to set this to an empty object for now. Then what I'm going to do is call the object.keys method. And remember object.keys is a vanilla JavaScript method that you can give an object, in this case, um, rec.body. And what this will do is it'll give you an array of all the keys in that object. Then we, what we can do is we can call a for each for each of the keys. And for each key, um, what we want to do is say if and then a rec.body and then we can give the key like this. So if the val this means the value of that key. So if the value um, of the key in the request body is not equal to an empty string, remember we don't want to be equal to an empty string, then what we can do is we can say, um, we can give, put that key and value in update object. So we can say update object, and then the update object key is equal to and then we can just grab the value from the request body like this so if i copy that and paste it into here we have that and then if we look now at the update object so if i do console.log update object and we open up the log again and i'm going to clear this just to make sure that we don't have any errors and if we put in oops we need to grab the id again because i just lost it um, if we copy this id and if i refresh this um, and paste in an ID and I put some text in here and then click on submit uh, and if we look at the update object we can see that the only keys that exist are the actual keys that we um, supplied right here all the empty strings are not in this update object so we can use this update object to actually um, to use in the find by ID and update and it won't erase any of our previous fields so the first thing it says that if the no fields are sent then return up no update field send so what they mean by this is that um, when we're submitting this form, we want to make sure apart from the ID, there's at least one field set. Otherwise, um, we won't be updating anything and there's no point. And the way we can check this is that we can check that the number of keys in the update object is at least equal to two. It should be the ID and then one other field at least. So the way we can do that is once again, we can use the object.keys method. And I'm going to copy and paste this in just to save some time. So, and I'll obviously I talk about um, how it works. So after we've um, said, after we've got the update object, we want to check that the number of keys in update object. So if you look here, we've called object.keys, given the update object, and that will get an array of all the keys in it. And we want to check that the length of that, so the number of elements or the number of keys is at least two. And if that's not the case, we want to send back this no update field send. 
So if we refresh this and then try this again, so if I just copy the ID of this and we try to run this update um, without giving any of the fields and then we click submit, we can see that we have the error message of no update field sent. And what we also need to now do is quickly set up a um, functional test for this. So we're in tests and then functional tests.js. And I'm going to copy this the test for this and then I'll explain this to you as well. So the test that we're going to do is the um, one about if we go to the put part, it's the part with no body. So what we do is we call make a try and put request to that to the test project and then we send it off with no request body so there's not even an id in this one but still the number of keys is less than two that it should so it should be fine and what we want to do is make sure that the response body is equal to this where it says no update field sent so that's what that test does so now that we have the update object um there's one last thing that we need to add to this and that's to make sure that this updated on date gets updated to the current date because we're about to update the issue. So what we want to do is in api.js, once we have our update object and we've established that it's got some information to update, we want to make sure that we set the update object um, and then we want to set the updated underscore on field. And we just want to set this to the current date again, like we did here. So we want to call the new date um, method, which will create a date object with the current date. And we want to then call the to UTC string method, which converts it into a UTC string. And then this mongoose will use this to create a date because we have a type of date for updated on. So now we finally have the update object. So if we just have a look at this again, and if I just um, open up the log here and I'm going to clear this again and what I'm going to do is copy the ID here and let's say that I want to change the issue text here to hello and I want to change the um, assigned to part to something like um, Hannah or something like that I don't know so if I put this in here and then I put um, I put text as hello and then I put the assigned to as Hannah and then I click submit we can see that we have an object now with all the properties that we want to um, change for this document and the values that we want to change it to. So we're ready to use the find by ID and update. And we have the ID right here as well. So what we can do now is use the uh, mongoose find by ID and update method to do this. So I'm just going to copy this and then I'll explain it. So um, after we've got our object, which was here, uh, we want to call the find by ID and update on the um, issue. I think I'm missing um, one of these. Yeah. So what this does is the first argument, you give it the ID of the document that you want to update, which is we got from our request body. Then we want to give the object with the desired properties that we want to set. And we have the update object that I've given here. The third argument is an options object and I've just set new to true to make sure that we get back the newly updated document. Although this isn't really necessary. And in the fourth argument, we have a callback function. The callback function takes in an error and then the updated issue document. And what it says is that if it was successful, um, we should return successfully updated. So if there wasn't an error in this and the updated issue document does exist, we can JSON that back. Otherwise, what it says is that we should be um, sending back an error message saying could not update and then the ID. So if we look here, if the updated issue document doesn't exist, um, we could say could not update and send the ID and this is this I haven't put the error case here because this is usually when they've submitted an ID for a project that doesn't exist so it's not technically an error but we don't have the updated issue right there so if I save that now and then I try and s submit this again um, we can see that we have successfully updated coming up here and then if we go up here and then um, refresh this we can see that we have all the fields set now. Um, I'm not sure if this button works, by the way. Um, for some reason, I've noticed that it doesn't. The the open checkbox didn't seem to work for me. I think it's some error with the front end. But if we put the op open thing in our request body, yeah, you can see that it's still set to true. If we said if we put the open thing in our request body, we should be able to change it. So now that we have the this form working, the final thing we have to do is we have to write two functional tests for this. And again, I'll copy and paste these in just to make it faster, but I'll explain what each of them do. So the first one we have to do is 
um, we want to do the uh, one field to update. So in this one, what we do is we send a put request out. And for the ID, um, we've just used the ID one, which remember was the ID of the first document that we created in this test right here. So we want to make sure that we give an ID of a document that does exist. And if we just create this just before we know it'll exist, so we can use the ID one here. And I've just set the issue text to new text. And what it does is once it's been saved, it will just check that the successfully updated has been sent back. And now we also have a test for multiple fields to update. And again, I'll copy and paste this and I'll show you, um, or I'll explain what's happening. So just paste that in, I'll just paste it into here. And what this does is basically it sends out, um, oops, I shouldn't have copied that. Um, so what this does is sends out a put request to this route again, and it basically checks that um, I think one of these is going to throw a problem as well. It basically puts two fields in this time, so it's multiple fields to update, and it puts a new title and new text. Um, we can also change something like open, but I'm not going to bother. And then what it does is it checks that the body was successfully updated. So we have a test for changing one field, and we have a test for changing two fields. I feel like this this test wasn't really necessary and only this one is necessary, but regardless, we have the unit test now. So we've essentially implemented a put request or a route that we can use to change any fields that we want in our um, issue documents. And that should be this um, test completed right here. So the next thing we're going to implement is this thing right here. And it says you can send a delete request to API issues project name with an ID and it deletes that issue. And the way we can test this is we have this form right here. And then if we put an ID in here, it will send a delete request. And what we wanted to do is just to delete the object with that ID. And um, the, it also says that um, if no ID is sent, you need to return ID error like this. So the first thing we want to do in our delete route is say if and then request.body.id doesn't exist. So if there was no ID sent along to be deleted, we want to say return rest.json and we want to JSON back um, the ID error message right here. So if I just copy this and just paste it into here. So we want to send back ID error if there was no ID provided. Otherwise, what we're going to be doing is the find by ID and remove method that Mongoose provides to do this. And again, I'm going to just copy and paste this in because just I just want to save time here. But I'll explain through what's happening. So um, what we're doing here is basically we run the find by ID and remove method. And the first argument to that is the ID of the document to remove. And again, if and this wasn't the case, we'd have it in the request body right here. Then this has a callback function that takes in an error and the deleted document right here. And what I've said is, um, if it was successful, they said you have to say success deleted and then the ID. So what this does is if there was no error and the deleted issue exists, and um, by the way, this deleted issue document doesn't exist in the database, but it's available temporarily for us to look at. What I've just done is JSON back a deleted space and then the, issue, uh, the ID of the deleted issue. Otherwise, if the deleted issue didn't exist, what it says is it could not delete. Um, so that's this one right here. And then the ID. And since we don't have the deleted issue, we can just give the ID back from the um, request body. And this is usually the case when um, they submit an ID for an issue that doesn't exist. So we have that now. But now we just need to implement a few functional tests for this. So go back to the functional test.js and we're at the very bottom now. And the first test that we have to implement is when no ID gets given. And the test for this one is actually um, fairly simple. What you'll do is you'll send a delete request uh, right here to um, the API issue test thing. And inside it, we don't give an ID in the request body. So the request body is empty. And we're just checking that the uh, response body has the ID error message right here. Um, not sure what's going on here, but we'll come back and fix it later, I think. Um, the next test that we wanna do is basically try and delete um, the two documents. I'm just going to delete off the two documents with the IDs that we said before, um, just to make sure that they, we don't keep creating newer and newer um, 
issues in our newer and newer issues documents that we can't get rid of later. So what this does is it sends a delete request and it sends ID one as the first time. And once um, once it's been sent off, what it does is it checks that the deleted um, uh, the, the response body says that, that it's been deleted successfully, which is what it should send back. And the other thing that I've tested is that if we make a delete request with ID2, it also says deleted and then ID2 like this. And the way we can test this out quickly is let's just delete this issue right here. So I'm going to just copy this. And what I'm going to do is just paste it in here and then click delete issue. And it says deleted and then the name of the issue. And if I go ahead and refresh that, um, we can see that the issue no longer exists in here. And if I try to delete again, since this issue doesn't exist, it will say could not delete like this. If I remove the ID from here and then I try to delete the issue, um, there's some client-side validation here, but if we manage to send this off without using this form, it will return the error message of ID error. So we basically implemented um, a deletion feature which calls delete by ID to delete the issue document. And we've written some functional tests for it right here. So in this test, what we have to do is basically if we submit a GET request to API issues and then the project name, what it should do is return an array of all the issue documents for that project. So we just have one right here and then we're going to return that. And if you also go to the, a page for a project like slash API test, for example, where you can submit new issues, there's actually a GET request being run here and then the results will be rendered down here as we'll see. But for now, we're going to be implementing the root um, slash API slash request a project name like this. So this will be the route that we're going to implement. And um, for now, the, the project that we're working with is just called API test. So right now it'll say um, something like cannot get or something like that. Um, so what we're going to do is fill that in. So if we go to api.js um, right here, we have a project already. So all we want to do is basically um, find all the documents um, that have this project name and we can just JSON it back. So we can just call the find method on the model and the first argument is the um, selection criteria or an object to select by. And we just want to make sure that the project is equal to the um, project from the uh, re request body. So we want to make sure that this project field right here is equal to the project from the um, not the request body, sorry, the request parameter. And remember, the request parameter will be provided like this. And then the second argument, this is a callback function that takes in an error. And I guess this is an array of results right here. And what we just want to do here is basically, if there was no error, so if exclamation mark error and the array of results exists like this, um, we can just json that array back so we can say return um, rest.json and we can just return that array of results back like this so if we save that now and then we go ahead and refresh this we can see that we have the array with all the documents in this case we just have this one document right here and if we go to just um if we just put the root for just the project name in which is api test in this case um, and then we can see that the get request is being run here. And if I create a new issue like this, and uh, I just put some name like uh, John, and then if I submit this, uh, we can see that the John issue has now been created. By the way, this table right here already has some routes created for closing or deleting a particular request. So we can do that from here as well. So if I were to close this um, issue right here, um, it's a successfully updated and if we go ahead and um, we refresh this and have a look we should see that that issue has now been closed so for some reason the yeah you can see the open is false the checkbox doesn't work but this close and these close and delete um options right here do work and in terms of testing for this if we look at functional test.js they already have a test written out for us um, and it basically just checks that um if we take the first document when we run this route um, for, and we created a bunch of documents up here, we just want to check that all these fields exist in the first entry in that array. So we don't have to worry about the testing. So we basically implemented the get route now and we can get an array of all the issues in a particular project. So now we're on to the seventh 
uh, test now. And what it says is that we can further filter our get request using a query. So we can just put like at the end of the get request, uh, we can put like question mark or something. And then we can say stuff like um, open equals false or created by equals. And then we can just put as many filters as we want. So all we essentially need to do uh, to make this work is when we're running our get root right here, instead of the um, instead of the project, if instead of the object to find our criteria being this, where we just check for the ones with the same project, we want to make sure that we create we give the request query in here. So if I just do console.log erect or query here, and then I open up this uh, log right here, and I'm going to clear this, and then Let's say that I want to find the, the ones where um, open is equal to false like this. So if I would just put in here a um, question mark open equals false like this, press enter. Um, we Nothing's happened here and that's fine, but we can see that we have the object right here with our desired properties. And if I were to try, if I were to add something else to it, so if I wanted to say created by equals Tim, so if I just copy this Tim, the way I can do that is I can add another um, query in here, like as a created underscore by equals Tim, like this. And um, we can see that both of those are available. So we can essentially give this in the find uh, function to actually return the um, documents. The only thing that's missing from here is the project field, because right now it'll return the issues from all projects with these fields right here. And we want to make sure that we only return it for the project that we're running our root in right here. So the, the modification that we need to make, so I'm going to create an, assign this to an object called let uh, filter object. And I'm going to say equals object dot assign. So I'm just going to copy all over all the properties on the request query. And the only thing I'm going to add to this is that in the filter object, we want to make sure that we also set the project name to be equal to the project from up here, right there. And if we log the filter object now, so console.log a filter object, um, of course, I've made a spelling mistake. So if we run this now, and then I refresh this, um, we'll see that the filtered object has now got the same fields from our query, but it's also got the project field filled in, and it got that from our um path right here. So we can now use that in the get method and it will only return the documents which match all of those criteria. So what we can do now is instead of giving this um instead of giving this object right here where we just look for the project, we want to just give the filter object right here. And if I save that now and I go ahead and refresh this, um once it wakes up again, um we should see that Okay, maybe I've gone too far with the criteria. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, sorry, this one has to be open is true. So if I change it open to true, yeah, we can see that we just have the one document being returned right here. So we, we can now add filters to our get root. Um, of course, unfortunately, we have to add a testing to this. So again, I'm going to copy and paste the tests and I'll explain what they're doing. So the first test we have is where we just add one filter. Um, again, we have two tests for this, one with one filter and one with multiple filters, which I think is so stupid. So what this does is it basically, um, remember that up here, um, when we create the um, new, when we create the new, um, uh, issues for this test project right here, not API test, but test. We have the created by set to this and functional test every field filled in thing. So what I'm just doing here is in the one f uh, f in the one filter, I'm just going to check that return the objects that have created by set to this. And I just make sure that for all the results that we get back, um, for each result, the created by field is indeed equal to this. So I said dot equal issue result dot created by um that should not be like that we want to make sure that we have a comma here and then close this off so again what this does is it gets back the array rest which is an array of results and we want to say that the rest dot body which is the response body which is the array 
And then for each um, issue result that we have here, we want to make sure that the issue results created by field is equal to the functional test every field filled in, because that's a query that we used here. Now, we also have to implement um, a test for uh, multiple filters. Um, hang on. I can't seem to scroll it. There we go. So for multiple filters, again, I'm going to copy and paste it, and I'll explain what's happening in here. So So what this does is, um, oh, this is so messy actually. I'm gonna just gonna tab this along a little bit. Um, it basically puts two fields in, so it said it checks that the open is true and this um, fun this created by is equal to the same. And what it does is for the response body, it basically checks that um, for each of them, the responses that we get back from uh, each item in the array has its open field set to true like this and the created by field set like this. So that's the test for that. And that's basically um, all the functional tests written out and we have all the f uh, features filled in now. So we're ready to move on. So what the final test requires us to do is just basically run all our functional tests and make sure that they pass. And the way you can start testing this, right now I remember I've paused it because I said it was getting annoying. Um, the way we can do this is if we go to the ENV and we set this node ENV to test like this, it will start running all our uh, functional tests and we just want to make sure we quickly clear the logs for this and then what it will do is it will restart the project and it will start running the test like this. And expect your test to fail, a yeah like I told you. Expect to test your test to fail a couple of times. Um, you're going to have to look through them and understand what's happening in each of them. By the way, every time you want to change your tests, what you should do is remove this variable so the tests stop running. Otherwise, they'll keep looping over and over. And then they'll spam our database with documents. And before each test, I recommend you um, drop the collection completely so that we start fresh each time because the previous documents might interfere with it. Um, the first issue that I found is in functional tests, um, in this one, I set the issue title to title 2, and then I'm trying to assert that the title is equal to just title like this. So we want to change this to title 2 like this. Okay, so I think I've just found out why this test wasn't running, and it's because it's actually embedded inside this other test right here. So what I want to do is make sure that I move this out. So I'm all right, so what I've done is I've fixed all the formatting now. So in each suite, we have these tests right here. And it, the problem was I'd embedded them inside one another, and that's why it, was, it wasn't running them properly. So I think I'm ready to test it again now. So if I just put test into here, and then click tools, and then logs, and um, wait for that to start running again, um, we can see that we have 11 passing right here. Um, and it says that all 11 functional tests are complete and passing. Um, if the tests don't work for you, I wouldn't worry too much about it as long as your um, manual testing does work. The test suite is actually quite stupid in my opinion in a lot of cases. But um, yeah, it is quite hard to get all the tests to pass, but I've, I've just about done it now. So what I've now just done is I've just applied some CSS styling to the issue page. And if we take a look at this now, um, we can see that it looks a little bit better. I'm just going to reset the zoom right here. So we can just basically put any project name in here we want. So we can say project2, for example. And we can submit issues for that project. And again, in the project field will be filled in. Um, so I'm just going to do this for API tests. So I can say issue1. And then I can put some text in here. And then put my name. And if I click submit right here, um, that issue gets created. And uh, what it does is it I've sh um, just rearrange it a bit so that the list shows up right here. And we have this issue one right here. I can also create issue two, put some name in, um, put some text in. And if I change the name of this to something like Zach, and then I put uh, the assigned to field as Mark like this, submit that, we can see that that comes up as well. Um, we can click this um, close button if we want to close an issue. So if you click on that, it says successfully updated. Um, this is all done by by the way um, in the um, issue.html. We don't have to program this in. There's some JavaScript functions to do this. We can see that this is now closed and it changes to green. Um, that's done through CSS style. And we can also delete an issue by clicking the delete button. And then if we press OK, the issue gets deleted. So we essentially have a system where uh, we can submit 
and manage issues for various projects. Um, if the only thing you can't do from this issue page is modify it, but if you ever want to do that, you can just go back to the main page that still looks like crap and then update it right there. But yeah, that's the issue tracker project completed now. And again, the test, there were no tests, but we've done it properly now. So you can go ahead and submit that and then click I've completed and then move on to the next project.